Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be doing our 80 carry tier list for 11.4. So as always, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out a ton of the channel. Come by, check out the stream. Starts around midnight Eastern Standard Time. Every night usually goes till about 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to be doing fresh tier lists for every single roll and fresh patch notes as soon as they come out. And we have tons and tons of topical guides like uh, best one tricks, how to micro better, how to macro better, um, and just tons and tons of other content on the channel. So be sure to like and subscribe and check all that out. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here. So they are hitting 80 carry a little bit here with some of the more popular ones like Samira and Kaisa uh, on the upcoming patch notes. Samira is basically gutted. She can she can no longer dash to allies and they have made her substantially weaker in the early game, although she does scale a little bit more in terms of damage in the later game. And her um, little wind wall only works for 0.75 seconds to the 0.1 so she already wasn't that good i don't think she needed that much of a nerf in pro play she had um about a 30 percent presence and less than a 50 percent win rate in solo queue she had about a 50 percent win rate so i think they're just pandering a little bit to people who complain primarily about her win wall so i really wish that they would have just nerfed that part of it and just see where it goes from there but this removal of dash to allies is massive so i knocked her all the way down from tier two down to tier four i think maybe she'll still be viable if you're extremely good on her in the right kind of circumstances especially if you have like a knockup support so she can use her passive or her passive in lane like an alistar nautilus something like that maybe but otherwise that's gonna be rough for her and then samira um i mapped this out in the preview video she's losing about 10 percent ish damage on her missiles it's not really that much it looks like it's quite a lot at a certain point, but um, you have to remember that she has 150% bonus AD scaling on those missiles as well. So even by the time she evolves them at two items or so, she's going to be dealing 600-ish damage on those missiles, and she's losing like 35 at max level. So it's probably even lower than that. It's probably actually closer to 5 or 6% damage um, once you get those two complete items. So I think she's still going to be about as good as she was. Maybe she drops like half a percent or so. Uh, Caitlyn got some scaling nerves i still don't think it's matter caitlin's just too difficult for most people to play because you can't just sit there and auto attack and keep up with most other 80 carries you have to be able to land your traps land your nets and just properly chain together your combos and you have to really understand tempo and push your advantage early and take over the lane without dying to ganks um so that can just be really tricky to manage and she just falls off pretty hard in team fights if you're not really far ahead because you don't have a lot of aoe abilities like you can't take hurricane you do have q which does some damage but it's not a lot and your ult is not really something you can use actively in combat it is good for sniping out and cleaning up kills if your team's ahead so i think she's a very good snowball type of champ but it's gonna be pretty rough outside of that Jinx is getting 60 extra health, so that's good. That'll help her early. Doesn't change her play pattern or itemization at all, so I still think she'll be probably tier 3. Um, Soraka is getting some buffs, so some of these you know, uh, champions that just want to farm up for later might get a little bit more breathing room with that, but Moonstone's also getting nerfed, so I'm not sure how that's going to shake out. Mortal Reminder did get a little bit of a buff here, so champions that can really take advantage of that um, could be useful. A lot of champs probably still just going to sit on Executioners and complete their first three core items. And then uh, Moonstone Renewer is getting a significant nerf, probably about 10% on the healing. So people will get it, but it will make sort of your Lulus and your Yumis and your champs that work really well with hyperscalers like Kai'Sa and Vayne a little bit weaker in lane. And the fact that these Grievous Wounds items on other roles, especially the Morello Nomicon, getting that 10 extra AP, that's a big deal. It's like 220 extra gold. So you're going to see even more Grievous Wounds in the meta, and the main healing item that people have right now is Moonstone. So Enchanters are going to get a bit weaker, so you will see sort of the flip side of that, higher damage or higher engaged champions becoming more powerful in the lane, like your Leonas, your Nautiluses, your Zyras, your Brands. Malachi's, all that stuff should go up a little bit, which means that more aggressive laners are going to edge up just a little bit and the scaling ADCs are going to edge down. And then it remains to be seen sort of what's going to happen with the jungle. I personally think that the top end is still going to be about the same. Check out my jungle tier list. Still think it's going to be like Udyr, Skarner, Ramus, and a lot of ELO brackets. Just anything that can abuse the um, Dead Man's, Phase Rush, um, Kim Tank. Just run in there, be unkillable, and disrupt the back line. Still going to be pretty good. There have been some people that are saying it's going to go to a strictly early game meta just because farming the camps is not going to be worth it anymore. So you might see like more Lee Sin 
Zen Zhao, Jarvan, a bunch of these like level two like hard cheese champs. We'll see how it goes. If that's how it's going to go down, then that would favor the ADCs that are really powerful in the early game, like the Jins um, and the Senas and things like that that can really be oppressive and don't need a ton of items to be effective early on. So we'll see how that goes. But um, anyways, let's go ahead and get into the main ADCs here. So I think that Jin is going to be number one right now. And I edged him up just a little bit here just, be, just to respect the fact that Kai'Sa is getting nerfed a bit and like I said there's going to be less scaling to go with her she's not phenomenal early game she's okay with her missiles but especially if champions you know like your Lulus your Yumi's your Nami's and stuff like that get a little bit worse with the Moonstone um, nerfs then you will see the champs that just do the raw damage higher up so Jen still going to be fantastic especially if you start seeing more of those engaged champs the leonas the nautiluses if we do see that early gank meta with the zen Zhao's, uh and things like that he just works phenomenally well with that because of his w right he has a free very long range piece of cc can follow up on ganks can follow up on engages very well and he has the early game burst damage to take over right and then um he can get gale force which makes him extremely powerful uh, very early in the game gets that extra execute gets the extra positioning to get the fourth shot or kite out some of these other early, early game champs that might be coming at him he can also get boots of swiftness once again very good at kiting out some of these other champs that might be running at him and then you have uh, the collector which is still going to be fantastic at snowballing the game getting you a little bit of extra gold and when you combine that with dark harvest and things like your fourth shot and your execute on your fourth ultimate shot and things like that it's just a ton of burst damage tons of execution potential so it's fantastic he's not going to be as good as always at you know late game versus like mega hyper carry tanks but there's just not a lot of those running around there are like the gens and the or the um the udirs and the scarners and stuff like that but the mobility also comes at a high premium versus those champs so not as great of a tank breaker as something like kaisa or vane in the very late game but nevertheless i think we're going to go to a slightly more early game meta with the nerf to moonstone and the nerf to the jungle a lot of people are predicting that so that's what i'm going to put on top so he's somewhere in s class whether he's exactly number one or higher is kind of up to you but he just works so well with the best items in the meta right now 480 carries and um just pairs together really well with a lot of different team comps so he's going to be super strong Sin is another one who uh, rose to popularity this last patch, 11.3. Um, and I think she's going to continue to climb and be more powerful. Now, I think she's a lot better right now at the AD carry role than um, the support role just because the itemization that's strong on her requires a bit of gold to get going. And her win rate has fallen down over the patch. She started off the patch at like 54%. Um, but then as she became more popular, as the all caps video started... Um, you know recommending her a lot more her pick rate went up a ton and that means you're going to have people that don't know what they're doing on Senna playing her more often which will drag down the win rate so the most popular build lately has been this kraken build and as you see she performs really well over time jen surprisingly did too on his chart if you notice that he had a bit of a dip at like two items strangely but then at like three and four he went back higher Senna just goes all the way up and a lot of that of course is because of the scaling with her souls <clears throat> but the new innovation with her is this uh, Kraken into Gensu's build, which looks really weird, but they did make some buffs to her specifically to help out this build. So um, now if she auto Q autos, it will trigger Kraken. It does put a, a stack of Kraken on people now with the Q, uh, which was really big. And they gave her a 0.3 attack speed ratio. She used to have a 0.2, so it's still not phenomenal, but you are basically getting 50% more value out of attack speed than you did on patch 11.2. So that's actually a pretty big buff. They gave her more gold on the souls. So every soul that you get gives five more gold than it used to. So if you can get like 40 souls out of the laning phase, that's 200 gold, which helps you complete your items faster, obviously. Um, and as with all of these next three champions, people just got smart and figured out, hey, tier is extremely overrated especially after those nerfs in the preseason of tier i think it's always been overrated for the most part on champions but people finally figured it out and just stopped building it and the win rates went up on senna on kaisa and um on misfortune and even on ezreal we'll talk about ezreal people stop building tier on ezreal so so it's magical it's like whenever people stop building tier their win rates go up a ton it's it's funny how that works but Senna, that's definitely happened with her as well. Now, it's not a huge difference. You know, the mana immune, once you complete it, is like 
but it's still like over a percentage point on the Kraken um, in the early game. But that's the big part. Now you can trigger it a lot easier. You get more value out of that attack speed. You still get a lot of on-hit damage and critical strike. And more attacks lowers the cooldown on your Q, which means you get more Qs as well. So it just all chains together um, to work really well with each other. So I think a lot of people can get on board with Kraken, but it's the Gensus that seems really weird um, for a lot of people. And Gensus is getting a direct buff on this patch. Not a ton, but a little bit. It's getting 5% more um, attack speed on Gensu. So not a huge deal on her, but that's 125 extra gold worth of stats. So it's okay. But the main reason you do this, there's two reasons. Number one is that your Q can apply on hit effects, but it cannot crit. And I believe it applies to all champions. So in a team fight, especially if people are grouped up and you hit two or three people with those Qs, it does apply the on hit effects from the Ginsus, right? So it converts your crit into an extra 40 on hit damage for 20% crit. So the Q now is gonna do way more damage uh, whenever you hit people with it in combat. The other one is it gets around the penalty that Senna gets for critical strike. So her crits only did 150% damage instead of 175%. Um, so, and if you got over 100% crit, so if you were going a crit build on her, which most people didn't go crit, but if for some reason you did and you went over 100%, you did get some conversion over to lifesteal, but it was just kind of a feels bad. Um, so anyways, that's the main thing, is that you you already get less value on your crit just because of the penalty from your passive. So converting it over to the 40 on hit damage bypasses the penalty and you still get full value out of the crit itself. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, that, that's the main story. It just synergizes super well and it synergizes with Kraken itself, of course. Whenever you, um, every second auto attack, you're going to gain extra stacks of Kraken, every third auto attack, you're going to get extra stacks of Kraken. So um, it just works really well together. And then after that, usually it's just either um, the Collector or Rapid Fire Cannon. Now you can still go for something like the um, Eclipse Man Immune build if you want to, but um, you're losing a lot of damage. RVZ Stealth, another um, content creator, did do a video where he kind of mathed out um, just how much like the, the Kraken Gensus does versus the Man Immune even when it's transformed the Muramana plus um, plus whatever, plus Eclipse. And it's just a lot slower too, right? You're, you're spending a lot of extra gold early on just to complete Mana Mew, just to complete tier. Yes, it's nice. You do get a little bit more mana, but there are other ways to get around that. Like there are other runes you can take um, to get around the mana problems if you even have any mana problems in the laning phase. So that's been my biggest critique of Man Immune for a long time is it just takes so long to come online. You have to charge it up. You're just going to be weak in the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game. And the game is just so fast right now. Dragon stacking matters so much. Getting plates matters a lot. Snowballing, getting those early kills, contesting scuttles, getting deep vision, getting rift heralds. You know, the game has just evolved to be much faster um, in the early game. There are mechanics to get you back into the game, but if you do snowball early, that's still going to be one of your best ways to win the game. And Muramana just makes it very difficult to do that. So, anyways, that Senna, really strong, great early game presence, great scaling, excellent utility with her healing, her root, the invisibility off of her E, and then of course her ultimate for that global presence. It's going to be a fantastic champ. You could definitely make the case that she could be number one overall, but. I, I would probably rather see her. Um, her stats aren't that great. They're like 51% in solo queue and in pro. I don't think they're amazing either. <clears throat> but I think she has a lot of potential. Anyways, Kaisa's the next one. So yes, like I said earlier, Rocket's going to be nerfed. But she still had a 53% win rate. And just keep in mind, she had a 38% play rate or 37, I guess, percent play rate. That means that everybody's playing her. People that are getting auto-filled out of the jungle and out of mid lane are playing her, and she still has a 53% win rate. We talked about the phenomenon with um, Senna was that she became more popular and that dragged down the win rate. Well, Kaisa is obscenely popular right now and still has a high win rate, which means she's mega OP. Anything that's that popular that also has an extremely high win rate means that there's just too much consistent value even for people that like are going to mess her up and not play her at the most optimal level. So she just has a bunch of different builds that can be effective. I don't think it's going to change that much. It's still going to be um, Hail of Blades, Ravenous Hunter. Now, curiously, as you'll see, she actually 
starts to fall off pretty hard late game. I'm not sure what's up with this 100%. I think it's just that she can be kind of dangerous, especially if you're not really far ahead in the early game because she is so short range. Um, but she just has a ton of tools in her toolkit. Uh, you can do Kraken if you're going to be facing like big tanks, but most of the time Gale Force is where you want to be. It just operates so well um, with her ultimate where you can just ultimate into that back line if they get CC'd and just get the isolated Q plus um, your Halo Blades three hits plus the execute off of um, off of Gale Force. It's just going to be so much damage later on in the game. So she's just fantastic. She can do tank breaking. She can do burst damage. She's excellent with the collector. You get a Sari to Dirk early, which is an extremely undervalued item. Gives way too much damage. Uh, Lethality is only budgeted at five gold each on the Dirk, which is ridiculous. So, Sari to Dirk is arguably the best combined item in the game. It's very close. And the fact that she can comfortably fit this into her build while still being able to evolve her Q, while still, you know, scaling up and having all the utility that she has between the big shield, the jumping around with the ult, the invisibility, and extra attack speed steroid with her E, the percentage magic damage based on her passive, the burst damage on her rockets. I mean, just every, even the, ex, basically the execute on her W just has so much base damage. She just has way too much in her kit, and her numbers are just way too high, and she's way too versatile. She can even get stuff like a Zanya's. You know, that has kind of fallen out of fashion, but as a fourth item, it's got a decent win rate. Um, she's just way too versatile and way too strong. So I nudged her down just a little bit here just because she is weaker early. She can be abused by things like Jin and Senna in the laning phase. Um, so if you do get shut down early, it can be a little tricky, but she can almost always find her way back into a game. So yeah, I still think she's going to be fantastic. And then Misfortune is the last one here, and she is someone where people are still building tier on her. I'm not a big fan of that build. Um, you can do, like, Comet plus the tier early on, so you just, like, spam your E. And if you're in a heavy poke lane, like with a Seraphine or something, um, that can be pretty decent. Sorry, my cat was down there, and she had something weird. Anyways, um... So that can be pretty decent, but um, I still think that like the Gale Force build is just going to be better. Now, a lot of people are maxing the Q, which does give you like more burst. Um, people used to get the W for more attack speed, but I think just the burst with Gale Force is probably the way to go just to get those executes. And remember that you can buffer, like you can Gale Force, and while you're in the middle of that, you can buffer your ultimate, and it gives you a really wide spread on the ult, just go watch a YouTube video if you've never seen that before, but that can give you a much bigger hitbox on your ultimate, um, which is really useful in some specific team fights, especially if they're not all like trapped on a ramp or something. Um, but anyway, so that does a ton of damage. You can choose either uh, Swiftness Boots or Berserker Boots. I personally am not a huge fan of the Kraken. It's okay, I mean, you do get it, like a quick trigger on it with auto attack, Q auto attack. Um, But um, anyways, I'd probably just end up going for Gale Force plus the Collector. I think it does a lot of damage. Although it is worth noting that Essence Reaver is actually quite good on her and is under purchase, but does have a pretty high win rate. So that's definitely worth considering. But yeah, lots of damage um, in the early game. Excellent early game bully. Has a really powerful ultimate. <clears throat> Synergizes super well with some of these hard engage champs, the Leona, the Nautilus, all that stuff. It's got such a long distance range and you just press R and it just deletes everybody, um, either single target or in team fight. She can rotate around and follow her support, you know, with uh, her W passive movement speed. She gets preferable back timings with her W movement speed. Um, so she just brings a lot to the table, has a lot of damage. Uh, she is gonna be vulnerable to some of these like all in engages, the Leonas and stuff like that. She doesn't have a lot of ways to get out of those you know, difficult situations outside of using her Gale Force, which is another reason to get Gale Force because it's a great defensive item in addition to um, the offense that it brings. But nevertheless, I still think she's going to be fantastic, especially if you have a lot of CC on your team to hold people still in team fights. Okay, and then the next few, now this is, I think most people will have these as their top four. There might be a couple more that sneak in there, but um, these are all going to be top tier on most tier lists. These next few might be a little more controversial. So the, this is where it starts to get a little interesting. 
Okay, Ezreal, even though he has... These two have negative win rates, but I think that the ceiling on them is so high and that they can be so strong in the right situations right now that they're definitely worth putting in A tier. And if you're extremely good on them, I think they could even be worthy of the S tier. It's just they're two of the most difficult ADCs to play correctly in the whole game. So let's talk about Ezreal first. And longtime viewers of the channel are going to know I am almost always very critical of Ezreal for a couple of reasons historically. Number one, he's hard to play, right? But number two is that he's a tier user and I hate tier. I hate it. I'm a self-proclaimed hater of tier for the reason that I talked about earlier. It takes too long to come online. ADCs are already historically very weak in the early game and they just get abused, right? Um, so you just end up losing lane, dropping CS, giving up towers, giving up dragons, plates, uh, just everything. You just give up the whole game as Ezreal a lot of times in order to be safe and most people aren't safe anyways if you look at his deaths it's going to be similar to a lot of the other 80 carries at least I believe so let me see does it have that on here like the usual I don't know I don't think it has that on here like usual deaths average deaths and things like that but at least anecdotally in my experience a lot of Ezreal still die way too much so you're just the, the reason that pros will play him is you're paying for safety. You're paying to not die, to not you know get dove, to have superior positioning, and you're giving up a lot of damage to do that. That's why he's been one of the most popular AD carries in pro basically since season one, right? But in solo queue, people just don't leverage that safety enough, and they die anyways, and they just end up giving up too much damage. Okay, so what has changed about that then? Well, people stopped getting tier. That's the, the number one thing. And a big reason for that is the huge buff to Essence Reaver. And if you looked at my patch notes from a couple of patches ago and they changed Essence Reaver, I predicted this about two or three weeks before people actually started getting it and it started becoming popular on Ezreal. I'm sure there were people in the world doing it, but the mainstream community did not catch on to the power of Essence Reaver until well after I'd called it. So if you'd listened to me, you could have been in on this early. But the main thing here is um, this gives you so much mana off the... Uh, change this passive it's 40 percent of your um damage dealt as uh bonus mana so if you queue somebody for like a hundred then your queue's almost going to be free it's going to be 40 mana so the math that i did back in the day on that video i think was on average you were going to be refunding off of just like one or two items refunding like 45 or 50 mana on your queues and so that basically gives you borderline infinite mana off of that and this item is so much better than tier to start with because um, you're getting more ability haste which is good but it has a sheen proc built into it which is fantastic so you don't have to worry about getting a sheen um, a sheen proc with your mythic right so you don't have to get trinity force in other words with this item or people had been doing the um, divine sunder right which still like it still has a, a pretty good win rate like all of these still have good win rates but the difference is just like night and day if you play against these builds um so you had to use your mythic to get these sheen procs which kind of suck so now you get your mana and you get your sheen proc on the exact same item and it has um pretty good attack damage the critical strike is sort of whatever like your cues can't crit but it's nice i mean if you auto attack people anyways which you're going to be doing then the crit does add some extra damage. So it's like you're just getting a bunch of extra value out of this. And it's not that much more than mana mean, right? This is 2,900, um, this is 2,900, so it's the exact same. Um, now this does give you like some pretty good on hit damage, but the mana is just like such a dead stat on him, you don't need it. Um, <clears throat> especially after they change presence of mind where you don't get a bunch of like free mana, you don't get the 500 mana off of presence and that doesn't convert over to bonus AD. So anyways, that's a huge innovation is Essence Reaver. And since you have a free Mythic slot now, then you can get Dust Blade, which is really good on him because it's going to be 20 Ability Haste again. So that's going to give you 40 Ability Haste. And the change to Ionian Boots was also very nice because that gives you extra Ability Haste. So now you're going to have 60 Ability Haste. Um, and you can, I don't know if he takes Ability Haste runes or not, but you can basically get pretty close to 40% cooldown reduction equivalency off of two items plus your Boots. And this gives you Lethality, which works very well with your Sheen proc, works very well with your Q. Um, and you get that extra proc damage. So now you're going to gain 65 flat damage plus 25% of your bonus attack damage. 
Um, so now you have double proc on your Q. You have the normal Q damage, which also got a better AD ratio on it. I think it's 1.3 now instead of 1.2. They did that last patch, which is a nice buff to him. But now you have the Sheen plus the Dust Blade plus your normal Q damage, and that really starts to hit hard. And then once you get a kill or an assist, you go invisible for one and a half seconds, which makes it even more difficult to um, stick to you and kill you in combat. And then you get an extra proc off of it. So he really starts hitting people when you get these two items. Um, this is so much better, in my opinion, than some of the other items. And there are very few wasted stats. Again, like, there's not a lot of attack speed on these items, right? There's no mana on these items. There's just not a lot of fluff that you don't need. It's just straight up raw attack damage, lethality, uh, and, like, different kinds of procs that do damage for you. So it's just all offense, all gas, and this just changes his curve tremendously now. He's not worthless for the first 20 minutes of the game. He's actually a huge menace. Once he completes that Essence Reaver, he's going to be doing just as much damage or more than some of the other champs if you're really accurate with your Ws and your Qs. Um, so he does, he does a lot. So you look at this chart. This was... You would never see Ezreal up here before. Like, his chart would almost always be inverted. Like, either just flatlined at the bottom, or it might scale up over time. Now it's powerful early, and then falls off later. A lot of times because people just don't do anything with their early game power. And then other items that have been very good on him. Ravenous Hydra is fantastic, and this gives you extra damage on the, um, on the proc, on the cleave. Let's see, minimum damage to units at the end. So now if you're hitting people with Qs that are... Um, <clears throat> that are all grouped up it's going to do splash damage to all of them and this gives you extra healing and it gives you a lot of attack damage ability haste and omni vamp so this is a major upgrade to the former blade of the ruined king which did some okay on hit damage but it just it was budgeted towards the attack speed and just did not have a lot of flat attack damage um so that's a fantastic upgrade there and then even getting something like sorelda's grudge at a certain point Right, it's 45% attack speed, 30% crit, and then slows people. So this is even better than that old Iceborne Gauntlet that he used to have. So it's just, once again, all AD, all extra damage, a lot of attack speed, or a lot of ability haste, rather. You can get over 100, so you probably get to, you know, 50 to 60% cooldown reduction, which is extremely good on him, right? Because every time you hit your Q, it reduces the cooldown of all your previous abilities by one flat second. So the more Qs that you hit, the more your cooldowns on your W and your E and your ultimate are, the more stuff you can spam. So he's just going to be almost impossible to catch. It's going to be like a two second cooldown on his E. So he's just going to be zipping around, you know, just lighting people up with damage. So this has completely changed the game on Ezreal and it's actually, you know, I think he's actually really strong right now, even though he's got a 49% win rate. And once again, if you're a longtime fan of the channel, you know that sounds like hell has frozen over if I'm praising Ezreal. Um, he's a fun champ. I've always liked his design. Um, I just think that he just hasn't had a good itemization build pass, and he was just too hard to play. Well, now he has a really good build, build pass, so people that are decent on him, I think now is your time to shine. It's a very, very good confluence of events for Ezreal recently. Okay, and then um, Aphelios, this is another one that's like part of the sub-50% club that I think is really overlooked and is really powerful. He is seeing a bit more pro presence, um, but... He's just very strong right now. Um, still pretty good on Conquer. They did change the Kraken build on him, so it's not as good as it used to be um, because his, I think it was his red gun would proc this multiple times for 100% value, and they changed it to where it does the appropriate amount, like one-third or something for AoE. I'm not sure how it works with his flamethrower, and um, but it's still going to be pretty good, especially with his white gun. When he starts to attack like a million times, it can still proc it a lot. So very good at killing squishies. But then you also have Gale Force. Same reason it's good on everyone else. Just executes people. Gives you extra movement. The extra movement, I can't emphasize this enough, is really clutch against things like Leona because he doesn't have any dashes himself. And so he's inherently pretty dangerous. So even just the ability to dash and get away from like a Leona ult or a Blitzcrank hook or something like that is very, very big, especially at higher levels of play where you have the reaction speed of the mechanics to do that. Um, nevertheless, very good. And then once you see his win rate starts to go positive pretty quickly, it's just when he gets like completely slammed in lane and it's like an FF15 game 
when he's bad. But then once he starts to get to that second item, his win rate starts to go through the roof, right? You can either get the uh, Runins. Um, I'm still a huge fan of the Collector. Runins does give you really good wave clear, but Collector, as we all know, just synergizes super well with anyone that makes great use of the Lethality, which he does. Off of all, his, all of his abilities, doing great damage. Um, <clears throat> and it still has crit. I guess they both have crit, so you're, you're getting up to that coveted Infinity Edge. And then once he gets the Infinity Edge, then it's kind of off to the races. But he just brings so much to the table, right? He has the, the built-in lifesteal. He has super powerful team fighting, especially against these bruisers that just want to run at him when you're talking about the white gun plus the red gun, the lifesteal, the extra movement, the extra just insane amount of damage that you get off of those little... Um, whatever they are, those little crescent things. Um, and then he just has really good like AOE burst damage with the flamethrower and his ult as well. He's got initiate with the purple gun. He just has so many different tools in his toolkit to adapt to different situations. And if played correctly, it just feels like he does a supreme amount of team fight damage. He's probably the best team fight ADC if you have the appropriate guns and you're a good player on him. So... Anyways, I think Ophelios is still very strong, but once again, heavily gated by the skill cap on him. And then um, Tristana, I think, is still going to be one of the most underrated AD carries out there, just off of everybody's radar. But secretly, I mean, she's had like a 53% win rate the entire season, but less than a 6% pick rate. And a big contributing factor to her strength is still going to be the Hail of Blades plus Kraken. She's one of the best users at that because... Um, she really, really loves those three attacks because not only does it do more damage and allow her to stack up her bomb when she jumps in faster, that's going to give her the second jump because remember, her jump resets off of a max bomb explosion as well as a kill or an assist. So if you jump in in the early game on somebody, you hit them with the bomb, the three hail of blades proc, and then they flash away because they're about to die, you can jump after them and follow them and kill them. So that's what makes her one of the most oppressive early game champs with stuff like the Nautilus, the Blitzcrank, the uh, Leona, because she can not only get in there immediately and do damage, but she can also chase and you know make sure that she converts those kills. So fantastic snowball champion in the early game, extremely difficult to get her also because she not only has a jump to get away if she wants it, but that jump actually makes her immune to CC if she times it correctly and higher level Tristanas are gonna be able to use that. It's so annoying going against a smart Tristana because all she has to do is wait until the CC is gonna hit her and then she just starts the W and gets out of it. Like I've seen her jump a Nautilus ult, the missile that's about to hit her, doesn't do anything. Blitzcrank hook, doesn't do anything. Ash arrow, doesn't do anything. For some reason, they've left that quirky, weird ass, like season one coding in there to where, and they've said they aren't going to remove it, to where her W basically makes her immune to CC for like 0.5 seconds. Um, so it does require a lot of skill and practice to do that correctly because if you jump too early, you can be CC'd. So if you're mid-air, then the Blitzcrank can pull you out of the air, right? Or the Ash Arrow can still, you know, hit you and you'll be stunned when you finish it. So you have to time it exactly perfectly right when the thing's about to hit you, you jump. So very frustrating champion to play against. Really aggressive early, snowballs hard, but is really safe with that buffer, with the jump, and then with your ultimate as well, being able to push people back, multiple people back that are trying to dive you. And it does 300 damage at level six for some reason. So really high base damage um, for an ultimate on an ADC. And she just scales super well too. Like she gets really long range as the game progresses, and then she gets a pretty nice attack speed modifier too off of a rapid fire and she takes towers really quickly because the bomb can be applied to towers so if you do snowball in lane you kill them or you just run them out of lane then you're going to crack and take those plates even faster and that's going to allow you to snowball even harder so great champion early so why is she not higher you might ask you could maybe make a case for her being s tier but her big problem is she's short range early on so she can get harassed by other things that have longer range like the senna like the gen <clears throat> stuff like that and she can't control the minion wave she has to push most of the time so and the explosive shot is going to make it hard to last hit a lot because it's just going to mess up your cs so if you get pushed into your tower it's going to be really hard to cs um and sometimes depending on how the lane is positioned if you push towards them they might be able to freeze you out if you're getting a lot of jungle pressure or if you fell behind early and they have something that's really spooky and you can't walk up to that lane 
you got a Soraka on your team, and they're staring you down with, like, a Blitzcrank sitting in a bush, and their, um, you know, Jen is just last hitting and keeping you frozen out, it's going to feel real bad. So that, especially at higher lows, is one of the main reasons you don't see her in, like, Challenger and Pro that often is because she lacks the wave control and she's short range early. But she also doesn't do a ton of AoE damage in team fights. So she doesn't get Hurricane, and yes, her bombs can explode and do some extra damage, but it's nowhere near, you know, something like Kaisa with Hurricane or Twitch or Aphelios. Just not going to do as much damage in team fights. So, anyways, very strong. Could make a case for um, Tier 1, but I've got her down a little bit lower. Last few here, and then we'll be done. I do want to see if we can keep this under 40 minutes. Um... I've got Ash next, and nothing special has really changed about Ash. Still going to be strong. She still has Engage, you know, with her ult. She still has Hawkshot, which is pretty good. I think a lot of people are just taking um, Kraken still on her. Just pretty much anyone that doesn't have a dash, you, you kind of have to take Kraken. Or not not Kraken, uh, Gale Force. You can still do Kraken to break tanks, but I still think that Gale Force is going to be very strong on her. Um, just because you're a sitting duck for engage if you don't have that dash so that really that really helps out a lot so she's okay her damage is not phenomenal it's all right though but the slow is just fantastic for setting up engages for your team um and just really controlling the tempo of fights one of the big issues with her though is a lot of adcs have learned they can just take cleanse and that nullifies a lot of the power that you have and uh phase rush makes people 75 percent immune to slow so, and like Udir, Skarner, um, a lot of those champs are going to be taking Phase Rush. So that is really obnoxious for her to try to deal with because that's her main way of, you know, her main contribution to fights are the slows. So that's kind of rough. So she doesn't align like super well with some of the stuff that's going on in the meta, but she's still going to be pretty solid overall. Great utility as an AD carry. And then Twitch is one where um, I actually have seen some good Twitches. I saw a really bad one. I think it was last night or maybe it was the day before i don't remember so i've seen some bad ones but i've seen some good ones as well and i have actually come to the conclusion that i think this nasher's build is actually pretty good um on twitch it's very you're very vulnerable with it if you don't snowball if you don't get ahead you know if the enemy has a leona or a nautilus or that kind of thing you're not going to get gale force so you're probably going to get blasted but if you have the engage early you can actually do quite a bit of damage and this item does snow it's very cheap and it snowballs you super hard in the early game you can open up with a doran's ring and then get nasher's tooth and it's going to be like 130 percent efficient and he really benefits hard from the extra on hit damage this item got reworked in the preseason to take away the cooldown reduction and to give it more flat ability power which he likes he has great ability power ratios on his contaminate and his passive um but it also gave you the extra 20% um, ability power scaling as on hit damage. So that's extremely good with your ultimate because your ultimate reduces the damage from your auto attacks by, I think it's 20% per target, but it does not reduce the damage from on hit effects at all. So that's why stuff like Blade the Ruined King and now Nasher's Tooth have historically been very strong on him because it bypasses that penalty that you get on your ultimate, kind of like how the Senna bypasses the penalty with Ginsu's. So a very creative build, comes online very fast, and can snowball super hard. If he takes Halo Blade with this, which most people do, you can get that stack to six really quickly. And I think it's like 200% of your AP or something on six stacks. It's like 150 or 200, it's nuts. And um, <clears throat> then that converts over to a lot of true damage as well um off of his passive so he really starts hitting hard off of one item with nashers almost as hard as almost anybody in the game outside of like maybe jen with gale force um she's gonna twitch now has a very early game and this has propelled him to a much higher win rate it's kind of like ezreal right twitch took a long time to come online he didn't get tier but he still required usually like two items like blade the run king was pretty good but you really needed like hurricane and infinity edge like you needed items for him to come online and do anything. But with this, off of just one item, you're extremely powerful and that lets you snowball super hard and get rolling on him. 
Um, and if he snowballs, he's very, very difficult to deal with because he's invisible, right? And this is something, this is why I've always been a fan of Twitch more so than most other um, champions for sort of YOLO Q is that people just don't ward properly for him. <clears throat> and he's just a terror. People don't respect it, right? If he's invisible, nobody backs up. And then the ADC just dies when you're out warding or something, and then they just spam ping you, or the mid laner dies and gets roamed on and spam pings. You know, nobody respects it. And so he just does a ton of damage later on, and then he still does all of his normal Twitch things, right? He does a, a ton of damage in team fights off of the ultimate. Um, he gets the resets on his invisibility. So he's still gonna be really, really strong later. So you're not sacrificing your late game that much but you're gaining a lot more in the early game. Now he does have this, if you don't snowball, this build is kind of bad in sort of the mid game because you have to get death cap, which requires two needlessly large rods. So if you don't have enough gold for one of those rods on a back and you're just sitting there with like a thousand gold and you can't get your rod, that feels pretty terrible. That feels pretty bad. So you do have to snowball. And you can kind of see that with his weird curve, right? Like he gets Nashers, in the first, you know, 20, 25 minutes of the game, he's just balling, right? It's 56% win rate. It's like, oh my God, this champion's OP. And then people are like, well, I only got like two kills. I didn't get 20 kills. So now it's going to take me another 15 minutes to complete Rabadons or whatever. And that's when he falls into the gutter here. You can just see the story told through this chart, basically. But then once he gets Rabadons, then he's kind of off to the races again. So he has this really weird lull just because death cap is so expensive and there's really not another great option with that. I guess you could go Hurricane second just for team fighting. I mean, that, that does work with Nashers. You know, the extra um, bolts would apply your Nashers damage, but you're not getting any AP to scale off of the Akathian bite. That's what makes death cap so good is it gives you so much on hit damage that you can apply. And this has so much raw AP on it with the 100 ability power that you're getting a lot of value out of death cap. So this is faster, but it just, I don't think it synergizes as well with Nashers. I'm not an expert on Twitch, but I see almost all of them going for death cap, which is good. And then the third item, you rarely would get to this, but it is a little goofy that it's Rift Maker third. Um, <clears throat> that did get nerfed a little bit ago. But it gives you some extra burst damage. I would rather see, probably, if you're going that late, just Night Harvester. Or just Collector or something. I don't know. It feels really weird to me to get Riftmaker late game. Because he's not really opting into really long fights. So I'm not I'm not 100% sure what's up with that. But most people get Riftmaker second. But honestly, game's going to be over by the time you get these two items, one way or another. Either you got Steamrolled or you Steamrolled them. So very high risk, very high reward, but it has flipped the curve, just like I talked about with Ezreal, where he's now much, much stronger early on in the game and has a lot more snowball potential with that Nashers. Okay, and I know we're a little over time here. We're just going to get the last couple here. Um, Vayne, nothing much really changed about her. Uh, I, I really wanted to put her in B tier, but to be honest, uh, she does have a high win rate. It's difficult to deny that. She is terrible in the early game. Um, at least that's what I think. I mean, I'm not sure what the chart, how the chart reads. Yeah, she's in the gutter in the early game, but she does scale really well for late. She is one of the best at dealing with something like the Udyr or the Skarner just because she has so much repeatable mobility. Um, so it's, it's very hard for them to run her down. <clears throat> and then she just goes Kraken. Now she has been going towards um, Phantom Dancer instead of Ginsu's. Now I thought this would be worse on her after the changes, but maybe I'm just wrong about that. The movement speed is nice. It does double down on the movement speed. It does allow you to once again kite the Udyr, the Ramus, the Skarners, all that stuff a lot better. So maybe that's more valuable than I think it is. Um, nevertheless, great tank shredder off of one or two items. Now... PTA has always been an interesting choice in my mind because it does not increase her damage on Silver Bolts. It does not increase Kraken damage. Go look it up on the rune page. It says it does not affect true damage. So keep that in mind. But it does give you that little bit of extra burst that you need to be relevant in the laning phase. You can maybe sort of trade um, if your support gets a really good engage because it still does the 40 to 180. And the extra 12% still matters right you still do normal auto attacks that's relevant and it does give an extra 8 to 12 damage for your entire team not just you 
and you can trigger it because you basically get an auto attack reset with your Q. You can trigger it pretty often. So, you know, there is a good argument for that. And then it does have nice secondaries, right? You've got Triumph, you've got Alacrity, Cut Down, all of those are good. But you can also go Hail of Blades, which would allow you to trigger your um, your Silver Bolts and your Kraken a lot faster with Hails. So that gives you much faster trading potential just to get that burst and extend the duration of your ultimate. So, and they have about the same win rate, right? Like Halo Blades is 52.9, uh, PTA is 53. I think it's just the secondaries aren't as good. Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter, that does give you some nice sustain in lane, but you know, Eyeball Collection and like these are okay for laning, but I just don't think they scale quite as well as Cut Down or Alacrity. So I think it just comes down to these secondary runes are just a lot better on her, but if you can get out of the laning phase, it's going to be very strong, like I said, especially against those tanks, especially if you have, you know, your Lulu or your, your Yumi or something like that with Ardent Sensor and Moonstone. She just really loves those long fights. Um, now, that stuff is getting nerfed, uh, Moonstone at least, and you might get camped a lot more if those predictions are true that everyone's going to go for these early game junglers, but I think she still has a lot of potential there. Your main rival in Kai'Sa is also getting nerfed a little bit, so if this nerf matters more than I think it does then that's definitely going to help Vayne out. Because they're kind of competing for the same slot, right? Like super mobile, like close range, um, just blow people up. Just the thing is Kai'Sa does it a lot better, in my opinion, with the missiles and, um, you know, a lot of other stuff in her kit. But anyways, that's going to be it. And the last few here, um, just in the remaining couple of minutes, we'll see if we can keep it under 50. <clears throat> Lucian's still pretty good. He's just like super close range. He's 500 range, and he doesn't do a lot of AoE damage in team fights. So he is good in the early game. He's great against skirmishes, but he can get bullied by stuff like the Jin, the Samira, or not Samira, uh, Senna, and things like that in the early game. So he has potential. Great at skirmishing. Great at kind of YOLO Q, but can suffer a little bit in team fights if you're not very far ahead. Jinx is getting buffed this patch, which is good but she requires multiple items to come online. And I just think it's really a one item meta, one, maybe two item meta for 80 carries. You notice a lot of these champs are extremely good on just one or two items. Um, that was the main thing that changed Ezreal and made him stronger and changed Twitch and made him stronger. So I still think she requires too many items. Uh, was really hurt by the Infinity Edge changes. Like she's not that great with Kraken, it's okay in the early game. You can go Shield Bow, but it's just not really that impressive. She really needs Hurricane and Infinity Edge third before she starts taking off. Caitlyn did get buffed, as I said earlier, really hard to play correctly. Same thing as Jinx, needs multiple items, doesn't have a great initial item. It's like Gale Force, yes, if that does help you out a lot if you're really good with those combos. That requires a lot of technical skill and practice. Go watch XFSN Saber. Or whatever if you want to learn some of those combos but she's just too hard for most people to play correctly and she requires you know an early game snowball and good sort of knowledge of tempo and macro to do well so at higher elo play with caitlin one trick she can be really good but um i think for just your average silver gold player or something it's gonna to be too difficult seraphine um they are nerfing moonstone but i think she'll still be good if you want a, an alternate um option down here if you already have a lot of damage on your team, you want some utility or your uh, support main and you're playing ADC. So she's kind of a weird pick, but I think she will have a, a good win rate if you want something that's utility to go with your team. Zaya's okay. I think the Essence Reaver is really underrated on her. I think she can be very strong in certain comps, but very skill intensive, difficult to play. Excellent um, with Gale Force as well because you can reposition to get those roots um, off of your feathers. So you're extremely good on her i think she can work and then swain is one of the only off meta picks that i'll say here if you do want a mage in the bot lane i think he's one of the better options just because he can chain cc so well with his e and then his grab with leona and stuff like that he can completely dominate early he is very susceptible to grievous wounds but his early game uh, snowball potential is pretty high so if you want something weird and off meta i think he's going to be one of the better picks and then the final few here um Draven's okay. It's just he does kind of like a lot of these other like B and C tier chants. He just doesn't have a great mythic. Um, you know he can go dust blade is probably the best on him. Not and the big thing is like Draven wants to hit really hard with just his first couple of auto attacks, and they've nerfed a lot of the items that do that. 
Um, so he's just really not that great with Kraken. Um, and I don't know. It's just the items just aren't really there. He can snowball. He can do a lot of burst damage. But a lot of these other champs also do a lot of burst damage and just bring more to the table um, than he does in the early game. So he's okay. He's not terrible, but he's in one of the worst places he's been in in years, I think, relative to other champions. It's just everyone else got really cool toys, and he just doesn't he just doesn't have a lot. Sivir did get some buffs. I think Essence Reaver is really underrated on her, but she still requires multiple items. If you hit your Qs a lot, she can bring utility, but... I think her cooldowns are just pretty long, and she's still super mana intensive, even with Essence Reaver. So, um, I just think there are probably going to be better options, and she's really close range, too. I know there has been a new build um, popping up with her where people aren't doing the Essence Reaver, and they're doing, like, Mermana plus Dustblade or something like that. Just please don't do that. I we're trying to move away from tier people. We're not trying to revert and go back. I know that's everybody's favorite pet item. And it's just, it's such a trap because it feels good, right? Because it's like, ooh, I have a lot of mana. This is cool. But people forget you're actually paying a very high price for that most of the time uh, on Sever. And her Q and her W don't proc on hit. So she doesn't have a lot of innate synergies with those items. Um... So I, I don't know. It's like it has about the same win rate as Essence Reaver does rushing it. The Mirror Mana Plus Dustblade. I had a Sivir on my team do this the other day. And I mean, she did put out pretty good damage. A lot of the big mistakes there were um, just macro-oriented things. But um, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just a hater. Maybe I don't understand it. I could watch another video on it. But I just really, really do not like Man Immune, as you all know. Uh, in the early game. I'd just much rather see Essence Reaver on her. I think like an Essence into Dustblade, like an Ezreal-esque type of build could actually be pretty good on her potentially. Um, but I guess you you really do... I guess she would go Sorelda's Grudge next. Uh, I was going to say like Infinity Edge is a pretty big thing because like your bounces, your ricochets can crit. So you really want crit and that's what differentiates her from... Ezreal, that Ezreal doesn't have a lot of great use for crit, so you don't need to get excess. Like, it's fine, you know, you get some on Essence Reaver, that's fine. But with Infinity Edge, it forces you to try to get to 60% crit, and you're not going to be able to do that with Dustblade. And I don't think she's that great with um, Kraken Slayer or Immortal Shield Bow. Like, those are okay, but not fantastic. So, I don't know. She's alright. She does have a pretty good win rate. If you have a bunch of meatballs on your team, your Olaf's, um, your Hecarims and stuff like that, that can work pretty well. Some of those champs are falling out of the meta and the stuff that's in the meta, like the Skarner, Udir, and the Ramesses are already super fast, so they don't need the extra movement speed. So I don't know, she's okay, there could be other choices. Samira is, um, I still think she will be playable if you're extremely good on her. I think she could potentially be better late game because she's going to have better scaling as long as it doesn't matter if you jump to your allies or not. She's just going to be a lot weaker in the early game. She's going to be much less safe without being able to jump to minions or allies. Um, <clears throat> and your ratios are just going to be a lot lower. So, I don't know. I think in skilled hands where you're playing a scaling type of comp, maybe it can work, but it, it's going to be rough. Kog'Maw just doesn't really have items right now. They are buffing Gensus, which helps out a little bit. You know, he can go. He probably has to go um, Gale Force just so he has mobility and he can dodge Leona ults and things, but um, just doesn't have a lot of good synergy with stuff right now. I wish they would just rework him a little bit. He's a cool champ, but doesn't work. Callista is overrated, I think. Um, you are seeing her summon pro play, but she just takes forever to get going. I mean, she is okay early, but like you have to stick so many spears in people, and I think you just want to kill them immediately. I feel like if you want this style of champ, just play Twitch. If you want like a stacking debuff that you just like execute people with, just play Twitch. Yes, he doesn't have the mobility, um, you know, to, to hop around and things like that. But I would say for solo queue, he has a more powerful ultimate, um, and he just does a lot more damage in the early game off of one item off of Nashers. Like she's gonna get. Um, Immortal Shield Bow, which is okay, but that's really a lot less damage than either Kraken or Gale Force in the early game. And it's like, yeah, Runins is okay, but I don't know. I think it just takes way too long. You're just dancing around trying to stick these spears in people, and you're just going to get one shot by somebody most of the time. So 
I don't know. I, I think she's a little overrated. It's a cool champion. People see her in pro and want to try her out, but I think it's kind of rough. Varus, they did give him a buff on this patch, so we'll see where he lands, but I think he's just a mess of a champion right now. He used to be, like, a pretty interesting, cool champ when you could do the Legolas build, you know, the one-shot arrow build, or even the on-hit build were, was fine. And he was a staple in pro, especially with the on-hit version for a while there, just because his ultimate is so strong in team fights. Because it's not only, like, it disables one person, but it can spread and forces the enemy team to spread out, um, which was very good at a lot of the kind of these death ball compositions. So I think he had a very good sort of niche in pro, but they've changed him now to where they want you to go up and auto attack a lot and then hit them with spells to get more value out of your blight stacks. And I think that's just not a good play style unless they want to give him a lot of bonus movement speed and like maybe cooldown reduction or just something like that when he triggers the blight. If they did that, if they're like, hey, whenever he triggers blight, then he gains 20% movement speed for two seconds and they want him to be able to run around and do that kind of stuff, that's fine. But I feel like they're trying to turn him into something like a Lucian where, or maybe even a Zaya, where you're trying to chain together, you know, these spells to end up doing a lot of damage, to be kind of a spell slinger ADC. And I just don't think that he's really lined up. His numbers just aren't great. So they made his burst damage higher on his... Um, Q, so like he uses his W. His W is weird. I think that's the thing that gives on hit damage passively, which they gutted. And then um, you can activate it once every like 40 seconds or something to get a much bigger like shot on your Q. So they want him to be like this one shot like Q execute kind of guy, but I still think it's I don't think it's that great. I think the on hit AP build could. I wish they hadn't have gutted that because that could be cool with like Nashers, like a Twitch S kind of build. Like Nashers plus Runins. Um, but they ended up gutting that too much. Or even the Legolas build, it's harder to balance that, but just like make the arrow stronger. Um, maybe that could have been a thing with like Lethality with Dustblade and stuff like that. But either way, he's just kind of a mess right now. So cool champion, cool options. It's just they just haven't found the right way to balance him. And then champions that I just really don't recommend in the bot lane that are technically classified as AD carries. We have Quirky, who just doesn't have a great collection of runes and items. Like a lot of these champions in B and lower, like interesting design. He's unique. He does a lot of magic damage on his autos. So that's pretty cool. Like if you need, um, you know, someone who does magic, I think Twitch or Kaisa is probably better if you want like blended damage. Because um, Twitch does true damage and the portion of his Contaminate on his E that scales with AP actually does magic damage. I thought it was all physical damage on Contaminate, but it's actually split percentage-wise based on how much AP scaling versus AD scaling you have on it. So he's a really good hybrid champ. Um, but there's stuff like that seems like it should be good. Like at the Essence Reaver change seems like it should be solid on him. Um, that only triggers on auto attacks, though, with the Sheen. Um... Man immune just seems bad. I don't know. Maybe people just aren't getting the right items. Like Essence Reaver first. He's just played so little that it's hard to get good data. But I feel like Essence Reaver Rush could be the way to go. And then, But what do you get after that? Because the thing is, like, yeah, it seems cool that he does magic damage. But a lot of his ratios are still AD. And it was just a really early iteration of trying to find out a way to, like, compositionally get something other than just pure AD on your team. But they didn't really think that through. They just don't have items for that because, you know, whereas someone like Ezreal um, or maybe even Sivir could go Dustblade and get a lot of value out of the Essence Reaver because the Lethality works with your auto attacks and your Sheen props, you can't really get Lethality on Corky because most of your damage is magic damage. So, like, you can get Sork Boots, which are pretty good, but then what are you going to get that's like another penetration item for your autos? Um, and that's just where it gets weird. Is it's like, what the hell do you get second item? I guess you can do Muramana, but it just feels like it's overkill with Essence Reaver. So I don't know. Maybe there's a combination of things that can work with him, but it's just he's in just in a really weird spot where there just aren't items that complement his skill set. His base damages aren't really that high. Um, he just he needs a soft rework i think like his his kit's not like that bad like i get it he's a poke mage that also does like some auto attacks and stuff but um his 
stuff just feels a little underwhelming. And then we have Quinn. I know that um, last night on stream, Scott was talking about how he really likes Quinn. And she can, like, 1v1 isolation, beat some other AD carries. But she just doesn't bring a lot to team fights. She doesn't have any AoE. You know, she does have a blind. She can roam really well. But I think that's much better suited towards, like, a top lane. And she's not even doing that well in top lane right now um, because of different matchup concerns. So, anyways, that's going to be it. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.